So welcome to the next tutorial. This time we're looking at the group member evaluation tool within D2L Brightspace. Again, logged in as a student. Just a, uh, I guess, a quick overview. Um, I'll go full screen. Uh, this is essentially when students need to provide feedback to their peers on soft skills, right? To really look at how they've been performing in a group, to um, really streamline the process of students being graded based on contribution. So individualizing perhaps a group project grade so that students, maybe a slacker or a free rider is um, detected and maybe punished in that sense. And an overachiever is also rewarded in that sense. So the purpose of this tool is to really make it streamlined for that to happen as well as um, just, uh, yeah, just to, to, to provide leverage for students to, um, uh, to contribute equally and to, and to do kind of pull their own weight, let's say, in a group project. So the first step would be to read the instructions. So in this case, it's a marketing undergraduate course uh, in, a, in a group of three students. I'm logged in as student uh, one in this case. And <clears throat> based on how each student has been reviewed, it will the grade will be adjusted automatically. And I'll show you exactly how that works when we hop into a teacher's perspective. So after doing that, step two would be to continue uh, the review process by giving a self-assessment, right? Based on a rubric, as we can see here, and then review my other students. So student six, and then my other, uh, my other peer. Um, what I can see is this criteria, preparedness, collaboration, taking initiative, responsibility, task, completing, team commitment. So I'll go through all of these and kind of assess myself. Like collaboration, I'll say I did quite good. Let's write some comment here. Um, I did well because of x right you can have that as a compliment uh, record my voice attachment and then post and i would continue to do that through all of the qualitative and quantitative bits of feedback for each criteria at which point i would move on to student number six and then perform the exact same process and go through the rubric um, once i've done that i'll just click finish later I can actually go to the third step, which is the reading and reflection step, which is basically, how do you think I could improve based on all the feedback? I'll go to the overview and I can see, okay, this was my self-assessment. This shouldn't be a surprise, right? Since I was the one who did that. And then this is from my peer. Now, I don't know who it is, seeing as anonymity is enabled, which is why we have this um, pseudonym name, consider it till cherry. Um, so I won't exactly know which student did what, just to reduce some of that friction. And I can click on the comment. So for preparedness, I was rated good by this group member. And this is the comment. If I want, I can even interact with it, ask for clarification. Can you clarify? Thank you. So I can really understand what is that feedback so that in the reflection part, I can have as much understanding as possible to write a really good reflection so that for the next group assignment, I'll know what I need to work on. And then that brings us to write the reflection step. So based on my self assessment and feedback, I performed worse than I thought because of X, Y, and Z. I mean, it's just an example, of course. I need to write at least 50 words, right? That was the setup from the instructor. And then my contribution grading is 75%. So how well I did uh, is that. Let me show you exactly how that looks from a teacher's perspective right now. So welcome back. We are now in a student's perspective. Uh, sorry, we've finished the student's perspective and now we're logged in as a teacher. And as we see, uh, feedback for is integrated within the iframe and as always, full screen mode. First thing we can see is the progress of each group. So how are they in terms of giving or receiving feedback? We can get a breakdown per student. So you have all these analytics, which we can download into a CSV format. This is all below, and I'll show you shortly. This is the instructions we had set up, and here is the giving the statistics on the reviews that were given. And I can open up this heat map, we call it, off the rubrics in terms of the received reviews, meaning out of all the students that have received reviews, where do they lie uh, in terms of how well they're doing? I can see there's a concentration of students here in preparedness, 
So it's a good characteristic, right? It's quite good. Um, but students are not doing so well, perhaps on responsibility, which gives really the instructor and I suppose a, a, um, a bit of an understanding of what students are struggling with and what they're doing well at. So the, the more blue it is, the deeper the, the concentration of students are. At which point, this is the statistics on the received reviews. Again, more analytics, all of it downloadable, and I can actually also download the reflections and or even get an overview and see all the feedback they've received. Now here's the group contribution grading. So this is where it gets a little bit, um, slightly difficult to explain, but I'll do my best. Now, based on this group, right, let's open up group number three. We can see that the grade that each student receives is slightly different. So the first thing you would do is, well, I can see, you know, based on all the criteria that they've been reviewed on, the students have reviewed each other, right? This is how well they've been doing. Now, skipping past that, we input the group project grade. So this is how well the group did. Now, based on how they've been reviewed back there, like back here, we get something called a group contribution factor. What that essentially is, is how well each student did relative to the average of the group, okay? So student number six has a group contribution factor of one. That means student six did the exact, performed on the average of the group. If it was above one, they would be overperforming relative to the group. If it was below one, they would be underperforming relative to the group, which is how student one did. Therefore, student one will get their grade uh, reduced. It'll be individualized in that sense. So the suggested adjustment is actually minus 75. So to give student one a zero. So I could do that and say, well, you know what? Student one was actually ill for some of that. So I'll under I understand. I'm actually just going to reduce it by uh, 30. Mm, yeah, sorry, minus 30 to be a little bit more compassionate. Therefore, here's how we individualize the project grade. What also comes, like how this is generated really is an algorithm. We have an algorithm that generates this group contribution factor as and, and, and that feeds into the overall suggested adjustment, which then feeds into the grade. Um, we also have something that feeds into the algorithm, which is the self to peer assessment ratio. And this is how well the students did relative to how they perceive they did. Meaning if a student did well, uh, but uh, they maybe perceive themselves as not doing as well, then their uh, self to peer assessment ratio is, um, is smoothened out. Uh, essentially, it's just how well they think they did versus how well they perceived uh, by others. And this, these two factors go into the suggested adjustment. So I understand it's a bit tricky to understand, but feel free to book a demo with us. And just, um, yeah, we're happy to just dive into it and explain it uh, a bit further. But in a nutshell, group contribution factor is how well you did relative to your peers in the group. Self to peer assessment ratios, how well you self assess yourself relative to how others assessed you. Those two factors, algorithm figures it out, gives you a suggested adjustment to individualize the group project grade which you input. So I know that was a bit of a long-winded way to explain it, but uh, once you're happy with that, you can publish the grades, which will synchronize into the D2L gradebook and students will then see it. Um, now in the edit mode, very quickly, what we can see is how we configure the, uh, the groups. We can also change it from a rubric, right, to a scale rating or a common criteria, depending on how you'd like them to, um, how you'd like to build that set. At which point we can have the allocations to be automatic or we can manually allocate them. And we can choose how many students to review. We can have the self-assessment, review anonymity, all can be, um, you know, uh, can be done or toggled off and then detect outliers. So students that have been doing, so students that are of interest, maybe receiving really low grades, they'll be uh, prompt, like they'll be, you'll be notified on these outliers, people who kind of, who kind of stick out, who are a little bit anomalies in the, in terms of uh, how the team rating is. And then the received reviews, we can have students rate the reviewer on a scale of one to 10. And that really helps students understand, you know, how well, Am I giving feedback? Teaches students those real-world skills of giving and receiving feedback. 
because they can actually clarify, you know, what do you mean when you say, I, you know, how could I improve the way I give feedback? And that's what this part here is for. And then we can have a deadline on the reflection and then the group contribution grading, which is the uh, factor that we had seen before. The one that's between zero and two. If it's above one, they've done better relative to the group. If it's done under one, if, if they get a, a factor under number one, they've done worse relative to the group and their project grade will be individualized. So that was it really from a, for the group, contribu um, the group member evaluation. Understand it may be a little bit complicated, but just understand that it's a streamlined way for students to get an individual, individualized project grade to disincentivize free writing and to reward over achievers. So thank you for watching.